All right, okay. So uh, we went back and forth on the scheduling thing for 11.6 or, or so. Is everybody comfortable with the, the single list that's really like five lists, but there's horizontal, but it's still a single list nonetheless. So any comments, questions, anything we need to sync up on today on that or? I, I'm fine with it. The only thing that annoys me about it is um, a thing that I think makes sense in issue boards, but it's not super clear. So because things can have more than one label, you sort of go down the list and then you go up to the next one and then you go down the list. But some of those issues are the same, repeat, especially yeah. deliverable in 20 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't think it would make sense to hide them because then people would be super confused about which list they show up in. But um, right. I think definitely pushing ourselves to use these features more, like you said, uncovers right. things like that where we're like, this isn't great. Awesome. Um, and then, so yeah, I'm I, wondering if it would be possible for, sorry, I'm wondering if it would ahead, be possible ahead. to have this, this, this is a, as the canonical board, but each team organizing and having uh, um, a one list only board, because then we could replicate the order that you have in this one. The only problem is that if the order changes mid uh, cycle, then we wouldn't be able to replicate that to the other list. Um, so do you expect this order to change in the middle of the cycle or, or is two, it two stable enough? Two responses to that. Um, so you can just filter by front end and back end and UX on this board for, for the purpose of picking the next issue, like I mentioned in Slack. Um, and second response is like I think Sean mentioned, where I, the, the order is actually maintained across boards. So if the feature is working correctly. I found a bug in the past, but I, I, it's, it's impossible to reproduce it um, reliably. And last night when I was doing this work, it, it worked perfectly fine. So let's assume it's working perfectly fine. And so I think if we reorder things, um, it should just work in whatever board you use in terms of what's higher priority. So, so right, well, let me, let me take that back, right? Because the higher priority right now is per list, right? So there, I have like, six or seven lists going this way, which if I don't know how Zoom mirrors whatever, so it's just from right to left. Um, um, but yeah, so, so my, my thinking is that if we can always just look at that list and go down, um, and I don't expect like Kushal to pick up an Elasticsearch issue, right? <laughs> for, for multiple reasons, right? I'm sure you can learn it and, and be very good at it uh, very quickly, but I don't think, Andre, you want him to be doing that. So. I, I just assume when, when, you know, by the time Kushan gets to that, he just keeps going down the list and looks at the next one. Um, and then so we can have yeah. separate assignee boards or whatever and so on and so forth. Um, so we still need to use per team boards. Like yeah, this. I just put a link in there to an example mm -hmm. of how one of those would look um, for the back end team. Um, because yeah. then everything in the left column is in order of what you should work on. And then you drag it into your own column when you start working on it. Right, basically, right, right. Or assign yourself or whatever. Yeah, um, and the reason that, we can't use assigned issues for that is obviously because people from different teams would be there. But um, the big list doesn't really work for prioritizing, but for working it does because you shouldn't be scrolling down that list um, right. as uh, an engineer, right? Like you should be picking from the top or the second one if you definitely can't do the top one, basically. Agreed. So, um, uh, so for portfolio management, um, I, I don't care too much how we do it because I know I know backend for sure has already been uh, Sean has already been assigning different folks even for the last few iterations. Yark has been doing the quote unquote main portfolio management, but like I, for example, Chantal did one which is like a bug or something. So I, I'm fine if we continue to do that, Sean. Um, but for front end, it's again there's only like. Uh, Kushal is going to be on vacation for a bit anyways. And then, so it's not like we have a lot of people. So I'm like, whatever we do is, is fine, Andre. So, uh, and since yeah, we're, I already I discussed this with him yesterday. On, okay. On one. So, so are, do, he'll be there, continuing assigning it to himself. Okay. Okay. So then, then he'll just look through and then just find the first portfolio. Yeah. I think that's totally fine. Um, what was I going to say? Um, does, does he or do you want a single person on the back end side to coordinate with Andre? Like, because I can do that. Like, I can do that and then have everybody else take why don't, these. Yeah, I mean, why what, don't what do you prefer? 
why don't we have Yarka do that then? Like I, I, like I suggested last time, like, let's not. Uh, it wasn't going to be Yarka be the single person because she wants to work on some other stuff now, but okay. it would be somebody okay. like Bleepy or something. So. Uh, in that case, I don't know. There's a, there's a couple of moving parts, Sean. One of them is just this meeting because it's really hard to get. Um, I think Annabelle and, and uh, Kusha are like in opposite time zones, right? So if anything, back end is definitely not the limiting factor. So um, yeah, I think if, why, why, don't, why don't we try Felipe then? And since he's definitely uh, yeah, middle, right? so you want Felipe specifically to be uh, assigned. Let me make a note. Right. So if I'm looking at the board, uh, yeah. So 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 if I look at the board and filter and portfolio management. Uh, yeah, I think I think if Felipe starts, that that'll be great. Um, and so the reason I say that is I do want to try going into order, but yeah, let's do this. Just not let's just keep portfolio management pretty much separate for now. Let's just work on that for now as a first assumption, and so let's not introduce too much change. Um, so let's let's write that. So. And uh, crucial. Um, okay, and then so so let's sync up separately. But let's let's try to reuse this time um, because Annabelle can't do super early. Um, Annabelle, let us know if this time is no good. But um, Kushal seemed to imply that this time is okay, even though he won't be here next week. But like, let's just use this time for now going forward. Um, the other comment. Yeah, I double check with him. It's fine for him. Okay. Sorry. I think both people said it's okay. So <laughs> I think we're good. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention on the board in terms of just priorities. Um, so I, you, you can see what I did. So, so one obvious one is that all the security ones are in due 22nd. And pretty much that's it, right? There's no other ones in due 22nd. So. Um, and there's a couple, I think most of the due 22nd are actually should be due 22nd because the, the due date is like the 23rd. Um, but what I want to yeah, do, these are all almost apart from, apart from the first one, all of these are back end as well. So right, right. Um, basically yeah. that's what the back end team will be doing for probably the most exactly. of the first half of next month, uh, which is exactly, fine. Which is like we already totally have. Fine. And then the idea is that like, once they're done, like, you know, we use that process and we get them um, exactly. assigned like over time. So, so exactly. So, so the only exception there is just Felipe, which like I was thinking like, should we have Felipe also do? Maybe you make that decision, Sean. I don't really care. But what I want to say. Uh, well, he's got a vacation coming up anyway. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what I want to be able to communicate outside to the world is that plan is following the security process, which is you folks, you being security team, at a due date and then we satisfy it to the best of our ability and we're clearly doing that because that's at the top of our list um you know we're not going to have a front-end engineer work on a back-end issue i don't think nobody's asking us to do that um so so you know we've done all our due diligence of putting everything at the top of priority and what i anticipate is going to happen is we're just not going to ship anything <laughs> for for 11.6 or no, that sounds very pessimistic but we're not going to ship we're going to be shipping a lot fewer features for 11.6 which is fine right because we need to have that feedback loop um and people already know that we're doing all this work and um and then i'm sure sean and andre that you can feed back to your respective reporting lines as well that you know, yeah, we have all these direction issues, but you know, look at our board. Like, uh, you know, this is how realistic it is. So, um, I don't think we need to take any action now. We just have to just keep following the process until somebody complains and then makes a uh, makes a change in the process. Um, so, so that's my take on on why I put everything at the top of of due twenty second and deliverable. And then the rest of them are. Uh, and then so I put direct pretty much 
uh, for deliverable, there are a couple of small things, uh, but most of them are, a good number of them, the rest are direction issues or bleed into direction issues as, as you move over. So a mix of portfolio management, boards, that type of thing. Um, and then, and then the rest you'll see is like stuff that it's hard for a product manager to prioritize, but I wanted still to put them, you know, medium level and not like all the way at the back. And so you'll see, I put Elasticsearch and technical debt. Um, so Elasticsearch, again, I'm relying, not again, but uh, for other folks on the call who is not Sean, um, I'm really relying on Sean just to let me know what needs to be done because the ultimate goal, if you look on those epics, is just to get Elasticsearch working on GitLab.com. Um, so I'm really relying on Sean to, to hammer out the technical details and just chip away at that step by step. So that's why I don't want to keep pushing Elasticsearch stuff out every iteration. I want to make incremental progress there. Um, and then I put technical debt stuff. And then the rest are just like stuff that we need to, to work on. So I could, I started putting like rearranging things so that's it's sort of like mix and match, but then like we don't really have a board to support that. And so this is easier just to put labels um, and just to work in, in categories. Um, so this might not work in the future, but it's, you know, um, that, that, that's my thinking. I just wanted to bring that up with everybody. So questions and comments on, on this approach. Um, if not, on to exciting things, which is, uh, is Pedro, Pedro, you're here. Yeah, so, so, so I, I like Pedro's designs like 50% of the time and I, I keep flip-flopping back and forth. So <laughs> it's really funny, but um, I don't think there's anything to discuss here because we're just going with Pedro's designs. But, <laughs> but uh, you feel free to click on these issues. I have to clean I up the ethics. I'm sorry? <laughs> but no, no, like- I like think the, that's the safest route. Right, right, right. So, so <laughs> in, I'll give a high level summary or how I think about these designs, but essentially um, I always really like to have designs that are um, really just like, if you know GitLab well, and like maybe you're a very technical person, you, you have like the, like for example, for boards, you have label list, um, milestone list and assignee list, and you can mix and match and you can put everything together and you can get whatever type of um, use case you need to address it. Um, but if you think about it, that's not a great user experience because all, you're treating all three attributes as the same thing. And it's not a great user experience because semantically labels, milestones, and, and assignees are different things. And from a user experience wise, we should indicate that. So there's always that tension. And obviously I always go to the one where I just want everything just to be flat and people figure it out. And but Pedro is rightfully fighting for the other one. Um, and so I, 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 I want to defer to Pedro because I know he's very smart. Um, and so for in this particular case, I am deferring to, to Pedro for, for milestones and making milestones a first class citizen. Um, so you can click on the issues there. And I wanted to give some background on that is because, again, um, we had a discussion about this in a product team, but, uh, and Mark Punsak was calling them primitives, which is like a great way to put it. Like you have primitives and you, they're building blocks and you, you create these features, right? Um, and so we have primitives and boards. We have those three things. But at some point, I think we need to put the primitives together to make something first class, have a more native integration experience our template experience, for example, and, and in this case, just change the milestone from a primitive to a first class citizen. And in particular, um, um, what was I gonna say? Um, what, what I noted to Mark in the protocol was that it's a sliding scale of the user, right? If you're a developer or a very technical person and using those technical parts of GitLab traditionally, we've had a lot of success in just building these primitives throughout GitLab and, and just, like, yes, it solves 80% of the use case that people complain about, but users are really technical and they, they can figure it out. But we're like on, in the plan area, we're sort of in this in between, right? For, for project management, these are very technical folks, you know, engineering managers, product managers, but as we move to product manage, uh, portfolio management, it's less so because these are business users. And so in talking with customers, developers always love GitLab. It's, it's very typical scenario. I'm, I'm gonna call, there's an engineering manager, there's like a product manager, the product manager says, 
uh, GitLab is not good enough. I'm going to use Jira. I don't love Jira, but I, I think it's, it's what I need to use. The engineering manager says, I love GitLab. Why the hell are we not using more of GitLab? And they're arguing with each other. So to me, that's just indicative of our, our feature set is, is we just have to get to a place where it's a lot more user friendly, uh, helping those more business focused users where they're not dumb. Like, I don't think we should just call them dumb or like that, but it's like not their responsibility or it's not in their nature to try to figure things out. They expect the tool to do things for them. So, so with what Pedro suggested, I, again, please click through to see the details. I think it makes a lot of sense. When I looked at what Jira came out two weeks ago now, I think, with the, and then it's like all over our Slack, people talking about it with their new boards. I think um, it, that goes to show how it can be super user friendly, even with like so complicated that Jira is that they can make it more user friendly. Um, I think we can do the same. So that's why um, these issues indicate that. Um, so let me, let me share my screen really quickly because I'm, I'm talking in, in, um, in, in, okay. So nobody saw the top. Okay. Um, let me sh share a couple of screenshots that Pedro put together or mock-ups up, um, which I think is pretty cool. So. So I just I just want to I want to talk about the, the milestone one. So let me see if I can find it. So right, this one. So what you see here, or why don't uh, this is dumb, Pedro? You should be talking about it. So, uh, <laughs> Pedro, why don't you talk? Explain your design to the team, and we can I can mouse around as you need me to. Yeah, so here, uh, as you can see, the idea is if you look at the top left corner, we still have the board switcher. Uh, you can navigate the boards and all of that. But then right next to it, you see the scope. You see that for this case, development, it's, it's scoped to the dev needed label or whatever you want to do. You can scope to a signee. You can, I don't know, maybe in the future we'll allow uh, any kind of scope. Uh, and this is more like of the definitive and uh, more permanent scope. You can change it, but it's usually what defines this board, right? For us here at GitLab, it would be, for example, the plan label or maybe another board, which is plan and front end, or you would put the assignees uh, if you just want to see your work or certain teams work. Um, but then on the middle, you have the milestone drop down, and that is part of the board configuration in the sense that we allow you to define a default milestone for this board. So in this case, this uh, development board, uh, the default one is uh, that one that is called Tanuki the milestone. Uh, but having this dropdown allows anyone, regardless of permissions, even if they are anonymous users, to see how this board, how this scope uh, looks like in other milestones. Um, and in the future, when we implement the persisting, uh, the last board viewed, we can even include this. So if you regularly look at not the default one, but another milestone for this particular board, every time you come back, you see that milestone. But of course, you have the opportunity to change back to the default. Uh, and so having this control where you say, this is the default milestone for this board, but also be able to easily change it when you're planning or um, uh, changing uh, milestones because one milestone has been finished and so we're now working on the next milestone. This allows people not to create different boards and they would just have one, two, three, four boards for everything. Um, after this, what we see here is, um, yeah, so this is the design, yeah. And we also see on the, the right side, you have the add issues button and the 12 days left indicator. And this is um, indicate, uh, indicating of the, the milestone itself. Uh, so Can when I you change milestones, question? you see uh, the different dates. Yep. Um, when you, you said this, so this is the development board and then it's already scoped to dev needed and that's a label, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so what is the one on the right? I'm, I'm sorry, I got lost there. What is the one right next to dev needed? Uh, that is the milestone. 
Okay. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is the main change that I'm proposing we, we do uh, over the next milestones. On yep. the label that shows dev needed, if it, it's multiple labels, you would show the multiple labels there? If I'm scoping it to plan and something mm -hmm. else, plan and front end, for example? Yeah, I, I, I haven't thought of the details of the design if we would show all of the labels or um, a count of if it's a lot of labels. Um, I'm not sure yet. But what's important is to surface the config as, most, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So that you understand, like right now, when you go into a board, you have that little blue dot that says the board is scoped to something and you have to click in it to see, and it's really not that user friendly uh, and discoverable. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I will try to, to make it as, as visible as possible, but of course there will be a point where we would have to truncate or uh, collapse all of the attributes into account or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's a good question, Andre. So, so what, I, what I got away from this, uh, I wanted to highlight two specific things from this design is that the scope here and the mouse down here. So, so don't even worry about the lists, which, which are important. Um, but, but right now in GitLab for a board, we have a concept of a board scope. And then that board scope is pretty much has like five attributes, label, assignee, uh, milestone, weight and author and you know emoji in the future so it's like six attributes and so i asked pedro why why are you so in pedro's design he's taking the milestone away from the board scope and making a first class citizen quote unquote in this drop down and so it's, it's, it's essentially equivalent because you can still set a default and the default is the config itself so like i don't like that design from the perspective and then it's like not flat right but then i do like this design because then you 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 semantically are saying milestone is more important and it allows you to switch quickly and then if you squint your eyes and think about it which i did for a long time um what you can do here which you can't do here is if you have don't have permissions so this is a public board and you come to gitlab and you have this one board you can change milestones um but me as the owner of the board, I set it as to this default milestone, but I can change milestones. But I can't use the same board and switch from plan to create, right? Um, and so my crazy idea, which I still think is an awesome idea uh, in a different like dimension and world and reality, but is to just make all these attributes exactly the same as this. Um, so I still think, I still, I still maintain that's a super crazy idea that I think is cool. Um, so let me just show you this because I actually spent some time in Balsam like putting it together. And um, so basically it's this, but you have this like for all like six attributes. And so if you do this, then you just set the default as the quote unquote board config. Um, and anybody can come in and say you you're have a plan board and then you can suddenly turn it into a create board if, you're, if, you, you, if you even don't have permissions to change a board config, but you can, you can change a view right away. So that is very powerful, but it's also really dumb. If you're like, if you're a new person to GitLab, it's like, how the hell did I use this? Why, why can I, why, why, why are you allowing me to change it? So, so I think it's a great feature if you know how these things are implemented, but it's like a terrible feature in general. So that's why um, I put this together and then like Pedro just shut me down with like three really convincing arguments. Um, so then I said, I said, I still want this thing, but I, uh, yeah, I no, but, but I, I really <laughs> gives me that. Yeah, I, but I really like that you explored this and, and thought, well, mm -hmm. so why don't we have all of these drop downs? Right, because yeah. uh, this allows, like, you having made this proposal actually highlights more why we need the other. Right, one. right, right. Yeah. So, um, and, and if you think about the first experience today of someone going into uh, GitLab issue boards. Uh, and they come from other tools or even like their idea is, well, I have already created these milestones. I have issues in the milestones. Okay, let's start working on this print, on this iteration. Uh, how the hell do I do that? Because I'm seeing all of, all of the issues. Oh, okay, I have to go in and I have to add a scope uh, in that little button, right? Uh, but with, with this, we put milestones as 
like in a higher level, it's still part of the config in a way that you select the default milestone, right. but it's higher up and it's much more tangible and visible. So when even a new user comes into a board, they would see milestones as the only attribute that they need changing. And the other attributes are basically an advanced way for you to create multiple boards. Um, and I, I think for most people, they, they will probably just use one board and just change milestones. Um, and and yep, we yep. have, totally of agree. course, we are, we are such a large company working in one project, or in this case, two projects, exactly. uh, and using issue boards at a group level. So we need to create all of these different boards for plan, create, right, security, right. verify, all of that. But for most people, they don't need that. And um, yeah, th this is, I think it's the best of both worlds. People can do um, both the, the crazy thing and, and be very, um, uh, very, uh, can configure everything. But at yep. the same time, it's very easy for someone to get started with issue boards. No, that's a great point, Pedro. I very little, maybe never have a customer ask me about like board config or, or things like that. There, there are issues that people ask about on occasion, but usually they, they, they ask me questions exactly like you say, Pedro, like how do I use this? They ask me things like, how do I finish a milestone? Or, well, first of all, like I hate the fact that we call them milestones because that's not what they are. But they don't ask like, how do I finish a sprint or an iteration? How do I move from issues from one iteration to another one? How do I close it out? Like, how do I do? And, and they are confused that they have to create multiple boards for each new one. And then this would exactly address that point because you don't create multiple boards. You have one board and then you just change the default over time, right? So, so you totally justified, yeah, yeah Pedro, in that design. Very, very good, thank you. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you for questioning and all of that. Uh, the only thing I'm not uh, comfortable, but we will talk in the issue, is with the milestone to to implement this. Uh, 12 milestone, I think that's too far away in the future. Oh, right, thing. right, right. So, oh, no, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Um, let's talk about scheduling. Uh, let's, let's focus just on boards because, um, well, because a lot of things, because like, we, we always want to do a good job, but we always want to move fast. So it seems like every, every week um, we're, get, we're getting uh, different marching orders to do different things. So this is, this is how, I see, how I see it. Um, so we, we can talk as a team if you think this is the right timeline. So, You can, you can see here, right? So this is about the, 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 the filtering when you're navigating and setting the defaults. I, I, yeah, I don't think default is there. I think it's just searching. And then uh, we're, we're shipping something, hopefully this iteration about navigating to your previous selected board. Real time, which is I think a big effort. Um, this one, this is pretty big as well. Um, and then this is the first one that I just put in from yesterday. And then there's like three more, -ish, three more epics there, Pedro, that I've, I've yet to put into epics and I hope to do this week from your designs, right? So this is where it slots here. So we can definitely put this, say, above like this. This seems like a pretty big one. So, yeah, what, what I'm arguing is that the, the separating the milestones from the board config and having that separate control uh, from uh -huh. the scope I think that is one of the main, uh, uh, um, it, it really helps managing many boards because this will reduce the amount of boards dramatically. Right, 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 right. So that's why I'm, ask, I'm, I'm saying that I think this is much higher priority uh, than the ones, the other ones that we have there. Um, okay, so let's- Because this is, this, this is both navigating multiple boards, sure. but also reducing the amount of boards. Okay, so let's- this is done. Yay, it's merged. These are, hopefully this is like a small front end one, view some report. Yeah, so this is back end as well. So we could totally switch gears and bump and just like interrupt this or we can try to finish this and then 
slot this one even before real time and collapse and stuff like that. What does what does Pedro and other people think? Like to me, this is a pretty big one, and it could maybe move lower, but. Yeah, what, what do you think? I, I see, I don't know, I, I see the, the that, that on not, I, I don't know, if, it may, if you want to have a separate epic for it, it's okay, but I see it between improving and managing many boards or inside managing many boards. Let well, I me mean, just order. I think what Pedro is questioning is which epic is, is the right epic for that feature. I mean, it doesn't matter. And, and, yeah, and the order. <laughs> I mean, like, the order but, yeah, for me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Ultimately, yeah. order is, is matters, right? Uh, I mean, uh, like we can rename that. I mean, it's between between improving and managing. I mean, literally, we can not do these two, and, and uh, I think one of these is scoped to eleven point six, or they not, might not be. Let's see. Um, so this one's eleven point six. This one's eleven point seven. So we could bump these two, right, uh, Pedro? And then if you can put together a design really quickly for either this or, or the, the scoping one, do we, I, I think we should at least have like three epics. And it, it's like, I don't really care. I, it's, the way I'm scoping epics is just so that I don't want these bars going on to the future forever. And it's uh, for the benefit of like me seeing things get done and for like people like Yob and Sid see that there's progress right so yeah yeah okay so uh, i don't i don't want us to to dwell a lot on this uh in this meeting so let me think about it and i will kind of write down a list of what okay. i think so so let me it's a okay. priority and we I'm, discuss okay in an epic so so um pedro if i have time i'm gonna try that my next thing to do that's not urgent I, I should have time today to create those two or three more epics for that go along with this one and then, but I'm going to probably put them like next to here. And then you pings me or Indesh or wherever to figure out where this slot should be slotted in. And then we'll go from there. And then, you know, be, be aware that, you know, it's the 31st. So if you want something in for, for the, for the next iteration, we have to move fast, but I think we can, we should definitely do that if you want to. Do that. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So that is great. Um, so, so the next topic I wanted to talk about in the agenda is how do we split up the design for these? So custom workflow and custom fields. So I remember, uh, Pedro, you said yourself and Annabelle, we want to uh, split into portfolio management versus project management, which is great. Um, and so are both of these Technically, both of these are like on issues level and boards. So I have no problem if we continue to do that split, but I anticipate that there's gonna be new features that obviously cross both. And we're, we're like, these two are example features that are, they have to be ultimate level features, but they're like they're issues and issue boards and not with epics and roadmaps. So at, at least as, as a first pass. So, do these still belong to you from UX perspective, um, Pedro, or? Because there's a lot of work here, <laughs> this uh, is what I'm saying. He's <laughs> no, <I, laughs> like, yeah. Uh, like, no, I, I think uh, the like, workflow. Like your your um, split makes sense, but is actually not balanced because portfolio management is, is new. And so we can only go, well, we can actually, we can go faster, but, but like, you know what I mean? Like there's a, like a lot more breadth in existing project management. So there's actually a lot more work there. Yeah, yeah, and, and that was intentional, uh, not to be necessarily balanced because okay. uh, like Annabelle, Annabelle is stuff. more right. and more uh, working as uh, like full time designer. Right. That's that's not uh, there yet, and right. and this so helps up. us uh, helps her have the, her own space, but also right. work on ed, every other, other thing for okay. uh, plan. So I would say the custom workflow would probably fall on me if it's something for the next milestones and custom fields it, it doesn't matter i think it's, it's okay um then then yeah it, then, then, it's okay it crosses everything in plan so it doesn't matter well like i mean we're going to implement it for for 
issues first. I, I don't anticipate we're, we're going to implement for FX anytime soon. Um, so yeah, l l let me just, the answer is it's still Pedro. And then you, you let me know if we need to adjust um, anything. Um, so we, we're about an hour into our one and a half hours. Annabelle has a topic here. Uh, Yarka, do you have to, uh, do you have any time uh, constraint? Because I know you just joined and we didn't really figure out. Uh, I'm fine. Okay, so yeah, do you, do you have, also, do you I have, have to any go in seven minutes. I'm sorry, Sean? I have to go in seven minutes. If okay. That's, uh, I don't think you need me for anything that's coming up anyway, so it should be fine. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Uh, yeah, that's correct, Sean. Um, Yarka, so do you have anything to demo or you want to discuss uh, on, on ongoing things before we jump to? Yeah, this? I have three things to demo, uh, which is, is this, okay. Uh, let me open the document. Did you say you have something to demo? You can just share your screen and then you can type after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I forgot the three issues I wanted to demo, actually. So from oh, yeah, no, let's see it. To yeah. let's, let's see it. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah no okay. pressure. No pressure. No, Take your time. <laughs> because it's in my current branch. So I will just share my screen. Oh, 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 where is it? Here. Okay. Uh, okay, so here I am. Uh, I am in uh, issues in project that belongs to a group. So I just go here. Let's check that. Oh, it's slow again. <laughs> no problem. Will, will GitLab buy you folks new computers? Yeah, I, I heard there's some new computers that were released yesterday. <laughs> what is this Puma thing? Isn't it like a sneaker? Like I see it in Slack and like, what is this Puma? <laughs> <laughs> it's a... Uh... It's um, more memory efficient than Unicorn, which is the server we use right now. But okay, okay. <laughs> it's also an animal. If you I, don't understand it's also an animal. Don't, I don't talk. That. Don't say sneakers. <laughs> so, so it's also an animal. Well, it's, it's seeking to understand, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Was there was there a Mac OS version called Puma? No, no, right? It was, it was like Tiger, Leopard. Cheat no no cheetah right no okay no mountain lion oh mountain lion that's right that's right before they changed to no like, leopard no leopard so it was cats for a while then they changed to mountains or it's just like cities now right or California stuff California okay uh -huh. yeah it's Cal California landmarks okay uh, very global I guess. <laughs> Do we have anything more to discuss? I'm just restarting GDK. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so we can start Annabelle, why don't you else? take it away? Yeah, Annabelle, you can take it away. Sure. Um, so last week I mentioned... Wait, where was I? Uh, oh, the sub-epics and how we were still sort of stuck on... Um, sorry, I don't know if you can hear my daughter screaming. Um, on what we want to do for the design for that, if we want to do it like on the ethics page and, and whatnot. I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. I cannot start screen share while the other participant, oh. Yeah, I stopped. Thanks. Okay. Um, okay. Let so we get rid of this little control panel because it kind of I, I recently learned that if you, there's like in the green area, there's a small arrow. If you click on it, yeah. it will go all the way uh, to the bottom. Thank you. That's, okay. That's like, uh, that's if you so have two screens as well, you can put it on the other screen, which is normally what I do. Yeah, I have two screens. I don't know why I didn't do that. Okay. So I was thinking, I, I tried a few more things. I'm not even on the right page. I'm sorry. I tried a few more things and wanted to get some 
feedback if possible. Um, for the sub epics, we were talking about the separate page if you want to do the organization there, but some people were saying it would be better to do it on the same page. So I don't know if you've seen this yet, Pedro, but I was playing around with a sliding panel, which I mean, it's not my favorite. And also if I was a front end developer, I would hate it just because I, I wouldn't want to implement that. But um, <laughs> yeah. there's, that, there's that, but I'm a designer now, so it doesn't matter. Um, exactly, yeah. <laughs> sorry. That's what um, we do, yeah. And then there's this other one I did, which I think makes a lot more sense um, because we don't actually use these tabs anywhere else. I was thinking it would be like a merge request where you'd have your discussion and this is still the epic detail page. The tabs and then there'd be separate tabs for the other things that you'd want to see, um, including the tree. Um, and I was thinking you could, we, we could have a toggle kind of like how we show discussion and system notes and it would show the whole tree, only epics or only issues. And this is where you do your organization and it would show the entire tree from the top. Ignore this, I'm not sure if this is necessary anymore. Um, but so theoretically this would work because you could still see your discussion and your tree and whatnot. And then obviously there's another tab for your roadmap. And I was thinking it would be, it would just show those epics that are, I'm trying to think, related to, I guess. Uh, it would show the epics that are in, right. that are children of the top most parent epic. Um, I, I think, yeah, so I think if this, anyone is pretty, this is pretty powerful, I would say, because well, I don't know, like, like, I think like Pedro was saying earlier, we're pretty special in that we, have, we stuff a lot of things in our groups and projects. So I think for us, at least, this roadmap view, I think is pretty powerful. Um, how I envision this is you would just show the, uh, you, what you're showing, Annabelle is showing, is what is highlighted is the current epic itself. Is that the idea there or is it something else? Yeah, this close epics would be the current. Okay. I should say close epics too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's not, that's fine. And same um, goes for the. Uh, I, I was thinking that what you show in the roadmap view there is yourself and your descendants only, or maybe your ancestors as well at most, but not like your siblings, which you're sort of showing here, right? maybe both I, I don't know I mean there's there's space right <laughs> so yeah and it kind of goes into the new roadmap where we're showing all sibling or right, descendants yeah. on the roadmap view and I had this idea which I still really like is to just show everything all the time and not have expanding and collapsing going on mm -hmm. everywhere because it's just really hard to get an overview I think and then I was looking at other companies products and and they do like crazy things where you know they'll draw lines from one epic to the other to show that right. relationship, and I, uh, yeah, I really don't L's, like that. Yeah, the L's, they're, they're ugly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this way, you still see the relationship uh, in that you see the descendants, and right. it's just always there. Um, I think I mentioned I haven't looked at it since last week, but I think maybe another uh, drop down that would show. Uh, I don't know yet, but this shows everything. And so right. that's why I was thinking on tab, it would show everything too. I, I think if we focus on, I don't think we need to worry too much about the roadmap view in the Epic itself. Cause like, if you don't show it to people, people won't need it yet. Whereas the, the, the real roadmap view is, is already there and has to be consistent once we create. So, so I'm, I'm worried about that. Like we have to, we have to have something there, whatever it is. Whereas this is like, I don't know, maybe another strategy is making this awesome so people won't need that global view. I, I don't know, I'm just thinking. Yeah, I, I, on that note, Victor, I'm also thinking in terms of implementation for this roadmap here inside the tab presents a whole set of challenges regarding <laughs> like narrower width and also that thing that we mentioned where the user will be able to scroll to see further down the line, right. all of that gets a lot more complicated when you have the comment box down below. Yep. I mean, if it's mm. a scoped view of the roadmap, then it's less trickier. So it should be more stable and more right. finite in the timeline. 
but still, um, so if right. it's finite, it, I, it's here, but if you have to scroll and then start scrolling horizontally and everything, it might have some troubles and you're squeezed with the sidebar on the right. Um, so, so the, I, I the don't comment know. box shouldn't be there. Sorry, that should ah, be there. Right. Be the discussion tab. And then ah, okay. I think oh, right, what right. you're saying about having a finite, it makes sense. Well, since we're on this epic detail page, right. I don't think we need to show the entire thing. There's an epic. Okay. Uh, yeah, then it gets like, slightly simpler. Yeah, I must slightly. Say. Um, and then you, there should be a button here somewhere where you, <laughs> you click and then it, it jumps to the global view anyways, right? And then like maybe view the entire roadmap. Yeah, so, so I think, I think this is, this is pretty point. awesome. Um, but yeah, the, the yeah. technical concerns are- I think the- more. Go ahead, Pedro. Yeah, I think the um, I, I really like the tabs. It's something that I have thought about as well, but the, like not having the roadmap, like having the roadmap here is just showing, I think it's, it's clever. Um, I, I, when I'm looking at this, the first thing that came to mind was when I'm creating like an event in Google Calendar or something like that, it shows me um, uh, which events are happening like uh, right before and right after the event that I'm creating so that right, I have right. context time. Um, so it would be interesting to show here not an interactive view of the roadmap, but a static view of like um, with this start date and this end date, that you have for this current milestone. So in this case, it's May the 8th until June the 22nd. These are every other epics that are starting right before mm. or that are happening during this milestone and that starts right after this one finishes. And so you could have a look and see, okay, so this is all that is happening. And if I want, I can click here and I go into the awesome roadmap view that has all of the features. But I would not try to replace the roadmap view. Replicate all that, yeah. So I would try to have a view that is very, that like that is helpful if we if we want to have it has something right. helpful here. But that not does not replace. It's not like an iframe right. uh, to the, the roadmap. <laughs> no iframe. Uh, that that's my my point about the roadmap between the discussion and the tree. Uh, I really wanted. Uh, to be able to do that, but I don't. I'm not sure if we if we can because, in some sense, it like if you look at it, it makes perfect sense to like if people comment a lot, they have their own area to comment a lot. If they have a lot of issues, they have their own area to have a lot of issues and a lot of epics and sub epics. But um, if you think about the way that a lot of teams work, um, they. <laughs> they don't work uh, leaving a lot of comments in, in epics and they just use epics as a bucket for product managers uh, and product owners to fit all of the issues that they want to uh, group. Uh, and so by putting discussion as the first tab, we're actually like putting at a second level the I most see. important feature of epics, which like, I don't think people will use epics for the discussion first. In, as a first step, they will use epics for the issues, the, their children. Uh, the discussion is a second step, right? If they are already using epics a lot, and maybe if they work asynchronously, or if they are a very organized company, which uh, they might not be a very organized company, they, they use comments and they have a thread of everything that is happening. But a lot of companies maybe just use Slack for all of their communication. So, so are you, are you concerned? The epic, no. Are you concerned, Pedro, that they wouldn't see the tree when you first load? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's that's my main concern. So, so, so um, the and not only question. that is, so you have the tree and also the commenting while looking at the tree. So if you're discussing priorities, um, you're saying you can do know, that at the same time. Maybe we can have a fixed. Right. So, so there's a couple. So, so the natural question is, we just flip it, but is that also bad? Where you show the tree by default, and then you have to click to comment. This is why, in the first design I did, like to me, an epic. The most important thing of the epic was the 
descendants. So I had it right there. Right. And I kept hearing things about clutter and vertical space. And like, like Pedro just said, we don't use the discussion tab that much. And there probably are quite a few other companies that don't use um, the Epic as like a discussion panel. That's and fair. That the, the tree yeah. is actually an important part. Um, what is meeting was it that we were talking about? Oh, the epic should be the place where we're discussing like the high level designs and stuff. So we should be using the discussion more for sure. I think <coughs> well, there, um, it there, was hard because we couldn't attach anything. There, there are different levels of discussion, but I would definitely agree that when you're having a high level discussion, it's unlikely you're going to have like a bazillion lines of comments. Whereas in like, look at batch commenting uh, in 1984, there's a ridiculous number of comments there. Uh, and then they go on forever. Um, so I think discussion is still valid, but I, I do agree that <coughs> maybe it's not as important. So another thought I had is that you do show the tree by default, but when you scroll down, it becomes a tab. And so it's, it becomes like a sticky tab. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like the merge requests tabs? Uh, similar to the concept of merge request, it, it might have been uh, proposed, but right now, um, when you load the epic, what I'm proposing is you have the description as normal, you have the tree underneath it as, as normal, but when you scroll down past the tree, then um, you have the, you just scroll down and then it becomes sticky, and then so you have those three tabs again, so you have discussion, uh, uh, tree and uh, roadmap. It's hard to explain. Uh, I don't know if it's a good idea either. Yeah, but I, think uh, I understand the challenge that, challenge that I have is usually when things get sticky, they're already on the page. So they just like scroll up and then get sticky on the top of the viewport. Mm, so okay. they already, already have to be there in the first place. So I'm trying to find a way to get a UI where you have the tree and then you have the tabs coming up, coming up and, and then I right. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Something trying like that. to conciliate. Is it is it so bad that people just have to click a button to discuss or click a button to see the tree? Like, if the tree is truly that important, let's just have it as the first tab, so you you always see it by default, and then you actually have to click a button to discuss. Sort of like in a merge request, right? The merge request, you could argue that the diff is the most important thing, and I'm sure people have argued that, but it's clearly you have to click a button to see the diff. Right, and do developers get pissed off about that? Maybe I don't know. I'm not a developer, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, in merge requests, like the the meat the meat of a merge request is in, in a second third tab. or fourth tab. It's in the last which is tab. Changes, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's after commits and after pipelines, yeah. and then you have changes where you actually right. have what people will comment on right. the most. I don't think it. I don't think it's it's. Uh, it's uh, not maybe bad. we should switch that around. We can probably switch. Yeah, <laughs> like, a, I don't have to be consistently bad, right? But we can. I think it's just to me. It it gives us license to to say let's make discussion lower priority and put the tree first. Um, I think uh, what I would suggest is I think this is worth a shot. Worth a shot. So as Annabelle was saying that she tried to have the first tab as a tree and then the second as a mm -hmm. discussion maybe we can already have that today with like an awesome uh, JavaScript snippet that Andre will write for us. And then we just, <laughs> we just click in a, like a bookmark in the browser and then we have that and we test that out for ourselves before going all the way to implement. You mean like having a prototype to kick around? Yeah, prototype just for us to test. I think it's such a, small yeah, I think we should, effort, yeah. I guess, because we already have the content. It's just putting it in tabs. Uh, well, well, let me, let me step well, back I'm and say... I'm saying it's low effort, but it's not me who's going to do it, so... Yeah, <laughs> I think there's some effort there for sure, Pedro, but do you agree, like, I, I want to at least take the stab, regardless of whatever... I just want to do tabs, because I think it's an awesome design. I'm willing to say that let's experiment, do research, blah, 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 whatever, to figure out which the order of the tabs and what's default. And I don't want to make it a configuration. Um, but if we agree on tabs, then I think maybe Andre would agree that it's less effort to rearrange them and then do some fancy like JavaScript feature toggle, blah, 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 to figure out which is the right one. But if we agree on tabs, at least we're going that direction. 
right? Yeah, I agree on the tabs being a, a, a good approach and the decision, the, the, the choice is relying on the order. We can either, yeah. we can even introduce the AB testing pitcher that we've been discussing on the UX calls. That'd be awesome. Um, That'd be awesome. And, and then check out, get the release out, get the numbers and then we, we can check. That'd be amazing. Because uh, it's, 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 I think it's a good case. It, and it's, it's the perfect think, case, right? Because it's, it's gotta be like the smallest change you can think of that's like actually relevant to test. It's an unknown. Yes, yeah. it's perfect, but we have to have a lot of people using them. And I don't know if we have a lot of people using this feature. In we have work. enough. Okay. Like, well, I'm not a statistics major, but I think we have enough. Like, <laughs> we, we don't have like traditional GitLab scale, but we still have scale of, of like users using okay. it. Okay. Right. So I'm not... Yeah, I'll, I'll leave that uh, scale problem to UX research because I'm not a statistician as well. Yeah, well that's so, why we but have... I'm, just, I'm just pointing out. <laughs> Well, you know, we'll also have to consider what would be the success uh, metric because, or the metric to, to track success because what is it? Is it people discussing the epic? Is it people accessing the tabs? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. But, but, or we can go with qualitative approach and have the UX research team um, grabbing that and, and we can build in a feature where with a URL or a cookie-based thing, they can just get presented two versions and use that to present to users and see what they how they react. I think in this approach might be more beneficial to do a qualitative approach than 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 an AB now that I'm thinking yeah, just the success is not as easy to track. Yeah. That's not a conversion, right? They just like open it, see the yeah. tree, right? That's fine. You don't promote so wanna get to promote it, right? Yeah. In the language of A B. Yep. yep. So so Annabelle, just one final comment, comment and, Pedro, and then, then I'll leave it off to you, Victor, is that I while I like like all of this, um, all of these concepts, uh, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want uh, us to have like the tree tab for it to be, I don't know. Maybe it can be different now that we with this tree tab, but I'm still not very comfortable with laying out the whole tree here uh, because if you're dragging and dropping mm -hmm. epics and issues and things like that you're effectively changing time, you're changing scope. Um, and yeah, I think to be honest, and, and maybe Annabelle, you, you took a look at it as well, uh, the way um, Jira Portfolio does it with the timeline view, and then they have a very like awesome planning view for all of this. This is what I would hope we would approach instead of doing all of this work inside of uh, an epic inside a, a timeline based view versus a a tree based view you mean mm -hmm. yeah um have you che checked out the the um, how, how portfolio works victor yeah I, I well not recently but um i think i know what you're talking about um yeah, with it's, the it's like having the timeline at the top right and then you have a list of like the whole tree below uh, you like it's, it's fairly complex. You can do a lot of right, different right, right. capacity and assign teams and see all of that pans out uh, with milestones on top, right? And all of that. And I think that's much more like that's what people will eventually want. Um, and doing that in in this inside of a milestone in a, of an epic, epic itself. I think yeah. that's a bit. So, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to actually combine the two views, right? So if, if you have a list view and then you have a timeline view and you just combine them, then you just have one thing. And that one thing is what, exactly what you just described, Pedro, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, so what do you think about that, Annabelle? What, one, one approach we could do is the, what we do have to ship is epics of epics. What we can do is we can just ship something really simple here, just show the children, not even show the expansion, and then focus on the, at least maybe, maybe I know we're not doing this for a while anyway, so you have, you have some time, but maybe we should, we should focus our design energy on the roadmap view first, and then see, see what we can do there. Because we, we haven't even decided like how we're gonna display the roadmap view, and then I think what Pedro is saying then, maybe we can consider moving things around in the roadmap view versus moving things around here in the uh, epic view. 
Um, yeah, when you say moving things around in a roadmap view, I, I did look at some of the Jira portfolio management things. I watched, I think they had a video. Um, do you mean sort of when you see the roadmap, you can sort you can take that like one drag bar, one specific yeah. epic, expand it, move it around. Drag and drop on the, on the timeline view. Yeah. Right. That's a, that's really complicated, with, right? Yeah. <laughs> with the list below as well. Because there's like a time What's dimension. The yeah, there's a time dimension and there's also a, a tree dimension at the same time. Yeah. I think it, that is obviously is that, very useful. It just seems like... It's, it's definitely complicated, but is it... Do we all agree it's, it's like a good feature? It's a, it's, it, you said it's useful. So it is a good feature, right? But it's just like massive. Yeah, it's probably more useful than our current milestone page. Or our current epics uh, roadmap and well, list view, which you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, you can't really compare. Like, we, we have, like, we don't even have child epics yet. So it's like, we don't have that yet. So it, it's, so yeah, yeah. Like, I'm thinking, like, maybe, maybe you can spend time looking at that for a little bit and come back to us and tell us, like, oh, it's ridiculously hard to design. It's not worth it now or, does that, does that make sense? Well, yeah, it does. I don't want to say it's like, it's too hard to design or we can't do right, it, right, but right. I'm wondering if for this, for this first, to get this shift, I mean, if the problem is having the tree version on, on that page, I, I understand mm -hmm. the concern there. We, we have time, we have time. So like, I, like, let's get it correct. We definitely have time. Um, I, I, I think like, the, the per the current roadmap, this is like scheduled to be worked on in January. I, I don't know. And then we can definitely delay it if we, if we need to more time to design, right? Like engineers are not the only ones that can so, talk, right? Like, so, like designers can, can take time too, so. So let, we don't Let have me to just add uh, something as food for thought. Um, what is the thing that or what is the approach that we are most certain will help the users the most? Well, is it the... having the whole tree in the epic or having the whole tree in the context of the other epics and uh, a time view? You know, well, def um, definitely so not necessarily about effort because then we break down the effort into mm -hmm. small steps. But I think we should uh, approach this more in terms of how certain we are of a certain approach. Well, it's got to be the latter certain one. Two times, so. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's, got, it's got to be the latter one, right, Pedro? I mean, we, we just said that, like, there's a tool out there, and then we know that those are the use cases. Um, customers are saying that they need epics of epics. They need, they're saying that they need to be able to plan them in time, see dependencies across epics as well. And then the dependencies are going to have to be times dependencies, essentially, right? I mean, that's, that's the point of the dependency, right? You can't work on it concurrently. Um, so I think it does make sense to jump there and design that first. Um, and if that totally obviates the need for even having a tree view in the Epic or just having the most minimal version of the tree view, like just your immediate children, then, 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 yeah, let's do that. And, was and, dragging and dropping across the tree a part of this epic anyway? Well, no, this, you know? you, well, what do you mean part of this epic? Like the scope of this epic? Well, yeah, like reorganizing things within a tree. Was that even? The, the scope of this epic is um, whatever, whatever you want it to be, Annabelle. And, but the, the scope of this epic that I care about is ultimately what customers care about, which is they want epics of epics, children epics. What we have to do as GitLab was we have to give them a solution that will solve it and not make them pissed off because like not, not give them something that they can't use, but they don't know what they want, right? They, they, they're using Jira portfolio, they're using Rally, they're using product roadmap, all these other tools. So they have familiarity with that. So what I'm saying is that we have time to do the correct thing. Um, and, and the box that we should be focused on is just supporting epic relationships. That's it. And then so 
how we support that and all the designs and how does the roadmap look, how does issues look, all that is up to us. So we determine that now and then at a high level, we can decide that, you know, is, you know Annabelle, you drive that. And then, then you can say like, I want to focus on this as a first iteration, then, then we'll scope that out further. But right now from a design perspective, like we shouldn't limit ourselves to say, we're gonna do this, we're just gonna do viewing epics and then not considering anything else. And it's, it's my okay, fault for, it's my, yeah, it's my fault for just giving you saying like, just design this animal, because that's not correct, right? It's like, I, I gave you this and then I, I said like, design this epic uh, and then I've laid out these things here and that, that's not correct, right? Like, I should have given you more of a problem. Um, and so that's an ongoing thing that GitLab. Yeah, I, th I think that's that's important. Uh, right. Yeah, so. and and sometimes it's yeah, like if it's from product side, uh, um, saying what the problem is. Sometimes it's other people like saying right. what the problem is, or sometimes we get feedback from customers and we exactly. build up what we think is a generic problem statement. Right. Uh, yeah, but in this case, I agree that it's about epic relationships. And ultimately, and this this is what I've been trying to argue for and defend is, uh, and sorry if sometimes I can sound a bit too opinionated, but is that um, like I think the most important thing is to encourage good behavior of like okay you have one parent epic and you have child epics. If you want to have like more than two levels, I don't think we should make that experience. Uh, great at least for the time being unless there is a high demand for oh no but i really want four or five uh epic levels and blah 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 uh, so more than thinking oh if this is this technically feasible and is this technically for free like we don't have a lot of effort to do unlimited relationships it that doesn't mean that we should do it so uh can is not should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so Annabelle, um, I, I do want to save some time for Yarka. So Annabelle, if you have any other questions, concerns, let's 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 take them to another meeting or Slack or whatever. Um, but yeah, Yarka, take it away. Okay, good. Thanks, Annabelle. Okay, so it should be working now. <laughs> I have it set up. So uh, I will start with okay, sharing my screen first. I will start with uh, closing epics, with, with promoting epics actually. Uh, second, so yeah. Uh, what is this? Yeah, this is just uh, the. This is just an issue that is not in a project. That is in a project that doesn't belong to any group. So you can see that there is no promote suggestion which is correct now when i go to the so, project sorry, I missed that, that belongs to a group you said it doesn't belong to a group so it's a personal workspace uh, personal oh. yeah, yeah yeah exactly oh, okay, yeah. okay 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 yeah so now i'm in a project that belongs to a group so you can see that i have here promote with with a warning that it can expose confidential information i click it and comment. Uh, you can see that uh, the system notes was already added. So I can click click it to uh, get to go to the epic. And when I reload the issue, it should be closed. Yeah, it is. <laughs> What's with that? CSR? You can see on the epic that. Oh, sorry? What's with the CSS? It's like the, the, the related issues is ginormous. Oh, no, yeah. whatever. I am. I'm that as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, you, you don't care. You, you, you don't care. You're a back-end engineer. <laughs> <laughs> something like that, yeah. It will probably be some, probably some stuff okay. of GDK. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry uh, for interrupting. This Go is ahead. the epic. Right. No, no, no worries. This is the epic, and you can see that it was promoted from issue blah blah. Right. And it's working. And so, for, so for, that's it, 
Yeah, so for, for this one, I thought we wanted to redirect to the Epic itself. I, I don't have the issue in front of me, but we didn't say that in the issue or? Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't do it for quick commands. Uh, we don't do it for moving issues as well. So we decided we that we will only for show. For moving, we don't? I thought for moving, no, we do. No. Oh, we don't? No. Oh, okay, I, I trust you more than I trust myself. Okay, so if that's the case, then, then okay. Uh, we do it when I, when I move like here with ah, okay. this button. We do, but when I do it with quick action, with quick uh, okay. action. I can I can see the argument for not doing it in a quick action because you could do a quick yeah, action yeah. for like it would be additional change and right, and then you can be typing other things and it's a comment box and you want to see your you comment see itself. The, yeah, right. That makes sense. I don't like it, but it's it's correct. I think it's not. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a that's a really good point okay so yeah no no please continue thanks for clarifying I just remember that moving can also expose confidential information and we don't have anything saying there but it's that's less another. yeah I know but it's less bad because it's in the same project but you're totally right Pedro it, it's a uh, um, in mean it's in the same we, group you mean yeah it's in the same group and also if uh, a confidential issue is less likely to be moved or at least i, I haven't seen it in, in, in gitlab world um no but actually, actually i think you can move from a private project to a public project right right yeah you can move you can move even outside of the group uh, issue right uh, yeah if anything it's worse <laughs> right you're, you're, you're totally right if anything it's worse you can move to any like all over it's globally right you can move global uh for moving but, yeah no, nope, nobody has complained, so that 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 is some indication. And also confidential. We issues. can create an issue for. We should create an issue. Com and also confidential issues is like a feature I suspect is mainly used by us, right? So if it's self-hosted, there's it's, it's more internal already. It's controlled, so there's less less of that. But um, yeah, please please continue. Okay, so can I continue? Yeah, yeah, sorry, please continue. Yeah. And okay, I, I so I will continue the with the next. Sorry, I was just going to. demo. Sorry, I was just going to say we're at, uh, at half past, but I can stay on um, if other folks can stay on. Yeah, I have, I have just two questions regarding this, Yarka. If, do, you, mm -hmm. do you mind if I ask them now or do you prefer if I ask in the end? Ask now. Okay, so uh, if you go back to the issue, uh, uh -huh. What happens if you try to promote it again to another? It will be promoted again because we can promote closed issues. Okay, okay. Um, and you, you uh, if we do don't that. want to do that, yeah, we should create follow-up issues. Yeah, you can. You right. cannot do that in a move no, issue, I, I, issue, but I, I don't like that. This is one of those things where I, I would argue with you. Like, I think it's too, too handholdy of a, of a feature. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. No, I, I, I don't care if people promote an issue five times. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. um, so, <laughs> so uh, what I was going to ask is, uh, compared to when you are moving an issue, the moving adds a system note saying that it was moved, but does it also add a system note saying that it was closed the issue? Because here we are only seeing one system note. Should we have another one for I think, I, No, I think it's the same for move issues, actually. Hmm. Yeah, because when I move here... I mean, this is not a good test because there could be an edge case, but <laughs> it's funny that we can <laughs> yeah, promote and move it. it was moved from here. Yeah, but in this case, the issue was already closed. Um, ah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true so i will do it Sorry, with Arka, I'm, I'm making this no, no. on you well this is why this is why we have a demo pedro this is ex precisely why we're having the demo is, is to, to iron out these so i have opened issue now here so i'm moving it come on okay You should try the Puma sneakers. Uh, you will go faster. <laughs> yeah, I will. 
<laughs> yeah, it was moved. Cool. Um, okay, so. Oh, I'm just waiting for the issue for the ghost one. Yeah, the original. Mm. The original one. Yeah, the. Yeah, it is only yeah. that it was moved. Okay. Okay, so final question is when you have promote there and you go to preview, what does it show in the preview of the uh, It's not done yet. Uh, for now, it shows only promote issue uh, to an epic and it should show the warning as well, but with the same styling. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah we, had, we had a combo in Slack on that one, Pedro. Okay, okay. No, no, I mean, this is, this is Annabelle's turf, so I will let her <laughs> review and, and uh, hit uh, whoever she wants to hit. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a question for Yerka. Uh, I, I mentioned this to Kushal, but I'm not sure if this was taken into account. But when you're uh, doing the slash promote and you see the warning in, in orange or something, is that box supporting longer strings? Because if that gets translated to a longer string, does it get like wider or do you know? I don't think there's a max width on that. Sorry? I don't think there's a max width on that. I've seen some so really, just really long. Yeah. Yeah, me neither, but it's purely front end thing and I didn't talk to Kushal about that. So okay. on back end, okay, no there is no limit on back end and on front end, I don't know, but I think it's not limited. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? No, uh, from me, no. Sorry, sorry, and thank you, Yarka. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I am going to the second demo, which is showing system notes for closing epics. Before so you I start, Yarka. Sorry. Before you start, sorry to interrupt. I'm gonna have to to leave the call right now, but I just wanted to highlight to Victor that I updated the the availability at the top of the document while we're on the call, uh, and Constance will be off for the four weeks of 11.6. Uh, we will have Fatih and uh, Kushal uh, on, and on December 1st, we'll get the extra person to work on portfolio management. But uh, I just wanted to keep you in the loop of that and uh, see you all on the next call, whenever. Thank see you, Andrew. Yeah. See you. Appreciate Bye. It. Bye. So I will continue with uh, displaying uh, system notes for closing epics. So I will use this one. And we'll use close, close, and you see that user closed. And when I reopen, you can see the system note again. Perfect. I think that's close. Yeah. Yep. We we just say we we don't say reopen, right? In in the other places, doesn't matter. No, 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 we don't. Okay, okay. I don't really care. Now I have to switch branches, one second. Okay. Are we showing um, the status of the epic in the epic page itself? Do yeah, we have that top. badge? Yeah, on the top. But it oh, sorry, I, I didn't see that. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't Thank refresh. You. Yeah. I don't think it even refreshes for issues. So I'm pretty, yeah, it doesn't refresh for issues right now. For, for, uh, for mm -hmm. quick actions, if you close in a button, it should refresh. Mm. One second. If you were using Web IDE, Arca, then you wouldn't need to switch branches. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I, I was switching branches. No, I was just- I'm now on the current branch. I was just commenting, I'm just joking, don't worry. I was saying if you use web IDE, then you, uh, okay. William from uh, Product Marketing has, oh, has, yeah. has a video about like, he's working on like five different branches or something ridiculous. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Okay, now we have to wait.
Okay, I think I think I will demo this next week because I would need to reconfigure. Uh, <laughs> Not a problem. Okay. Okay. So are are you because here? Are you here next week? So next week I won't be here. Um, but I still want to encourage people to to have the meeting. So uh, Yarka. You are here. Is this time good or not good for you? I forget. You said it's not good. Uh, well, not really, because usually I am at home alone with Elishka, so okay. it might I, I might be online, but it might get a bit tricky with her. <laughs> okay. So what? So so what? So just this time is no good, or this day is no good, or both? Like. I'm just thinking, like, uh, later we... would be better. Later, my husband is back from, uh, from work one hour later. So. Okay, and then, uh, but on Wednesdays or just all days of the week? All days, all days, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, okay. it's perfectly fine anytime. Okay, so but so it's time constraints for you. Like okay, one one hour later, it's better. Okay, so Kushal is not here next week. So why don't I propose pushing this back? An hour. Uh, does that work for Pedro and other people who are later in the day? Does that work for you, Pedro? If we do an hour later? Well, sorry, an hour later than for today? Yeah. Because Kushal uh, is going to be out for the month. Yeah, that would work. Or is Kushal out for the month? Is yeah, it? that would work for me. Okay, Actually, okay. I'm behind one hour because of the light savings. Uh, change. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, don't you love so, okay. so so yeah you if you push it one hour okay. forward it would be how it was one I'm week gonna, ago i'm gonna add a <laughs> meta comment as we close when i worked in a real company or real office this is a real company um i remember when setting up meetings <laughs> i was really annoying like time time was annoying because people had meetings all day but this is obviously worse because of our time zone but what was always limiting was um conference rooms like i could never get a conference room and we would i would i would always do is just buy everybody lunch on the company dime of course not me but always have lunch meetings because that's when there was actually time and like people if i wanted like 10 people in a room together it was always lunch time when people were available and then i would just always feed them and so people would come um so for us it's not conference rooms it's just time so i find that interesting anyways um i will so say, about about the timing, oh, sorry, I'm going to drag this out even longer. <laughs> um, the, you know, we were trying to find a time for this meeting, but we're supposed to be a little more asynchronous, and this meeting has gone on almost two hours. So I'm wondering, the, the separate portfolio management meeting, when you say it's used mostly for demos, why is it the portfolio management needs that time to demo? Like, how is the demo different than reviewing a merge request locally and looking at the interaction? It's not different. I think it's valuable to have the interaction that we just had. Um, it's a, that's a great question, Annabelle. I And so what I just said is not gospel truth because we don't do that. Like every team does it differently. Um, and even within plan, it, this is just legacy reasons why we have, we, we, when we started portfolio management a year ago, we said that we're going to have dedicated people working within the plan team. And so it was very natural to just have a, a weekly meeting for that. And then naturally a good use of time, that time is just to have demos. So that is just what we did today. So I think that can be changed if you think it can be changed. Uh -huh. what, what do you think, Paige? Uh, I think it was really beneficial for us because we all had, oh, sorry. Yeah, I think it was really beneficial for us in the past because we all uh, saw what we implemented and we all could have our uh, thoughts about it. Because when you review merge requests, not everyone is involved from the portfolio management team. And I think it really helped us to find some bugs before we actually merged it or even put it for review. So I think it was beneficial for us. I think another point is that it uh, puts more like healthy pressure and, and adds more responsibility for the people that are developing the feature to demo it in a nice shape, right? So if they are not able to demo it, it's because it's not... Uh, it's a forcing in, function, in, right? Yep. Right. 
Um, but I, I agree with you, Annabelle. Maybe, I don't know if, if it would be the same. I, I think maybe some things could be lost, but we could do asynchronous demos, right? Uh, Yarka yeah, I would argue, or another developer. I would argue video, a video recording, yeah. Like, I would that argue could video, work as well. a video, like, maybe that's worth a shot because if you don't do a video recording, you just throw, an, just throw a branch at somebody. Like, I agree with what, exactly what Pedro just said. Like, you don't feel pressure the healthy pressure, like as you put it, to do a good job. But if you do a video recording, you know somebody's going to watch it. And it's, it's better than a screenshot because you can, you know, just muck away a screenshot. So maybe a video recording is... But why only portfolio? Why does portfolio management need the healthy pressure and the video demo? I'm not we saying all, that it wasn't valuable because it was. Yeah. No, we, we need it across but, the board. Animal. Yeah, no, we can make this a planned thing. If Like, it just so happened that we we had like a special, like, super team for portfolio management which is now that's breaking apart anyways it's just become a core part of plan so we've just had momentum going in with portfolio management yarka has been one we've had a couple of back-end folks doing portfolio management yarka has been doing it for a good number of months now so it's just it was just natural for us to to have her on the call today and demo it but i i i think i totally agree we should have the same thing for the other areas which it's just we've never done it and so what's the next iteration process wise? So um, it would be great if Sean and Andre on the call so that they can offer their feedback as well. But um, put, let, let's talk about that in the retrospective, in the, in the retrospective issue. Do, do we have one already for 11.4 or no? I think we do, right? Yeah, let, let's, let's, let's talk about it there. But um, so in light of that, Yarka, um, do you wanna try a video demo for next week? So that, or should we, we can do it, but that, there is only one issue to demo anyway. So, and it's really simple one, so I can do it. Okay, so why, why don't we do this? I, I don't want to keep changing meeting times because I don't know if people will make it. I'm going to leave this meeting time as is, and I'm, I'm going to encourage people to join it. So, Yarka, if you can't join the meeting, why don't you put a video somewhere on the MR for Annabelle to look at, and then that can be totally async. And then, um, and then let's bring up this issue separately in the retrospective saying like, let's do, I, I personally think just video, recorded video demos is a pretty cool idea and we can throw them on YouTube, right? Uh, so everybody can look. Yeah, sounds good. But by yeah. the way, do you have any nice application for video recording? Uh, QuickTime. <laughs> and okay. Mojave has a shortcut <laughs> to, to do it. So, um, but just, yeah, I just, I just use QuickTime. When I recorded the demo from a couple of weeks ago, I just used QuickTime and then you can even record yourself. Just, just Google it. You can record yourself talking with the screen share. So you turn on the, the camera and it sort of records both at the same time, which is pretty cool. So you get the, you get this exact same experience, right? You can look at somebody's face and look at their screen at the same time. It's, it's awesome. Um, yeah, you, you should add that to the the handbook. I should. If you already know how to so do it, I should. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> we'll do the let let me do the retro first. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna find that retro issue and I'm gonna I'm gonna tag Annabelle and uh, and let's let's go from there. All right, this is way over. So thank you everybody, and I'll talk to you whenever we we talk. Bye.